You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. It's good to gather together this morning. It's good to have those who are housebound join us on the live stream, but particularly good to be able to gather here in the church to reflect, as we've just heard in that entrance antiphon, on the Lord's mercy, a theme which will be taken up in our readings. And I'd like to suggest a little later in the homily, in the reflection, uh, that us being together as the community helps us to ex each experience that mercy of God, helps each of us to, to form uh, the other uh, in that path to which we are called. To begin this Mass, we recognise our need of that forgiveness, our need of that new beginning. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. This is offered for the intention of Fleur Fru. So let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. From Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus, appointed by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, true child of mine in faith, wishing you grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength and who judged me faithful enough to call me into his service, even though I used to be a blasphemer and did all I could to injure and discredit the faith. Mercy, however, was shown me, because until I became a believer, I had been acting in ignorance, and the grace of our Lord filled me with faith and with the love that is in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Preserve me, God. I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. You are my inheritance, O oh Lord. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. You are my inheritance, You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. You are my inheritance, Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. 
O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends out his word to the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told a parable to his disciples. Can one blind man guide another? Surely both will fall into the pit. The disciple is not superior to his teacher. The fully trained disciple will always be like his teacher. Why do you observe the splinter in your brother's eye and never notice the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the splinter that it is your that is in your eye when you cannot see the plank in your own. Hypocrite, take the plank out of your own eye first, then you will see clearly enough to take out the splinter that is in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. First reading the gospel have different starting points. It seems to me that that contrast actually highlights perhaps uh, the message on which we should reflect this morning. In the gospel, the instinct of the person the Lord describes is to try and take the splinter out of their neighbor's eye. It sounds like a work of mercy, trying to help another in what can be a very painful experience. It brings back memories. It sounds like my mother trying to get that bitter grit out of the eye that is causing it to be inflamed and and your desperate need for her help. If it comes from motherly compassion, then it is to be much appreciated. But from judgment, then the Lord is right that the other needs first to take the plank out of their own eye. Practically, it will help them to see what they're doing. Uh, Morally, there is a sense of of why should I trust someone who is unaware of the failings that they have in their own life when they try, as it were, and correct mine. And at a human level, I think I'm much more likely to allow someone who is aware of their faults and failings, who is trying to address them themselves, to be something of a model and a guide for me, which is the wisdom of St. Paul. He starts in that different place. He literally starts by reminding the community and us of his past. He humbly admits his faults. He acknowledges that they took work implicitly, that they will continue to need work. And in doing so, He becomes the model, the example, which others will choose to follow. Will not just allow his help, but will actually seek it out. Because here is someone who has lived the experience, who has discovered that mercy of the Lord, who is able to help others to discover it, therefore, for themselves. I know Father Roy was talking yesterday about the closure of St. John's Seminary. I know that because I tuned in to see his homily before I headed off at St. Pius, thinking that his inspiration would help me. And as as he talked about that closure of the seminary, it uh, reminded me that when we were there uh, on Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday, uh, the rector spoke at the lunch, and he spoke... Uh, about the fact that finances have been a factor in the closure, uh, a small community, a very large building. But he also referenced the fact that the community had become too small to be a community uh, of formation. And that phrase struck me and stayed with me, and I've been reflecting on it since. I could see that if it was about finances, we might have rallied round, had a second collection, whatever. 
I find it easier to accept the closure uh, because if the community is no longer large enough to form each other, then that will be uh, a struggle. To have the range of experience and wisdom, to have people at varying stages of their life and their journeys of faith, each trying to respond to the call that they have heard, to the call that we heard yesterday uh, to be saints, each recognising uh, the need to shape their lives in response to the Lord's call, and each recognising the responsibility of helping uh, their brother or sister to shape their lives too. And it struck me that it's part of the reason that we are invited so earnestly to return to be the community that actually comes to be here together. Because what we do is not simply a passive listening or a watching, but it is a real engagement with the Lord and an engagement with each other, that we become that community of formation for each other, that we share our experience, our joy at having known for ourselves the Lord's mercy, and that therefore we can help others to discover that joy for themselves the importance of being together, of helping to form one another, of allowing others to form us, to be a community who together are open to being formed by the Lord, who has called us in these readings and who now gives us the strength for that journey together in the Eucharist which we receive. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. 
For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit to share eternal, merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of my formation. Thank you to the stewards for making it possible, indeed the live stream, for, for making it possible for those who, who cannot be here. I hope you have a blessed day. And a reminder, we have evening prayer at six, if there are any intentions that you'd like to send office at cpg.church. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.